Hello, I'm Lisa from Realizat and I'm sitting here with... Mike from the Dutch band Laventura. Yeah. How did you like your gig today? It was fantastic. It was one of the first gigs. We really had a big, big show to do. And with all the atmosphere, a lot of people who were there to support us, it was fantastic. I have to say, I love you because you played every one of my favorite songs of you. Ah, cool. And I think the um, atmosphere was very good. Um, there are less people than expected, but uh, you rock very much live. Thank you very much. Well, we were the first band, and usually here in Holland, uh, people travel in later in the evening. So it was, it was a cool gig to do. We had a lot of people we recognized, so it was very cool for us. No problem. How did you come to FAM? Ah, we were asked. Um, the organizer, Tom, he did one or few of these little uh, venues before to support his uh, birthday. And he wanted to do something really big. So when he targeted the EFNA, the big uh, venue here in Eindhoven, he was looking for a lot of different kind of music, well supported uh, by a female singer or a female bass player or whatever. And we were one of the first he contacted. So that was very cool. What are your impressions to this moment from the festival? Uh, very well organized. Uh, we had a good time. We were here very early. People were already running around. So uh, no, it's very professional, very cool. And what do you think about uh, female metal events in general? Um, I have to say, for me, I don't mind if it's male supported or female supported. But um, at the moment, female supported bands um, maybe have an edge. And there are a lot of uh, events going on with uh, something like supporting female fronted bands. Uh, but for me, um, it's, it's okay. They're doing well at the moment, like financially. But for me, in maybe about five years' time or something like that, there's no more difference between male or female, just music. That's great. Um, there are about six years between your first album and your beginning and White Crow. What changed since this? We had to cope with a lot of changes in our band. Uh, when we were writing the new songs for the second album, we lost our drummer and our keyboard player. Um, to make sure we were uh, the right band to go into the studio, we had to reinvent our sound. We skipped all what has to do with keyboards, so it was a more rock sound we were uh, looking for. Uh, then we had to look for a good studio, a good producer who understood our music and understood our wishes. And we found one in Paris, in uh, the vicinity, and this producer is very cool. His name is DJ Chasno. Um, and he has a very, um, how do you call it, professional analog studio where he could create the sound we wanted. And there was a, a, a marriage made in heaven. It was fantastic. All the equipment was uh, high end. It was a blast. But the whole production took about two years to finish. And we had to do the mastering. Then we had to make it work with a release. So in the end, it took uh, nearly three and a half years. Way too long. <laughs> yeah. You, are, you have two versions of your album and uh, two labels. Yes. Could you explain a little bit? Um, I'm doing the management also for the band, and it's now really up to the band to understand the new way of doing business in the music industry. It's good to have a, a very uh, professional label behind you who knows the territory, but if you're hooking up with a smaller label, an independent one, who operates in a specific area, you do not have to give them the world. Just say, okay, for this specific, specific territory, you can release our album because you know it. So we did that for um, the, the territory for the Germany and Austria and Switzerland release with one label and for the UK, Ireland and the Benelux. So we are open to do anything we want with our album and we have per territory uh, a, a specific way of working with the partners. And they do the work and we see what we can do. Yeah. Um, White Crow is a very catching title, I think. Um, yeah. What do you want to say with this? Um, it's about a metaphor for something you do not see, if you know what I mean. There is probably nothing in the world like a white crow. Mm. It doesn't exist, but it's just like a metaphor. And also about the hard work we had to do to finish this album. It was almost impossible to finish it, so, okay. <laughs> that was a story to um, Devlo. Yeah. Um, when we wanted to do the second album, we knew 
right from the start what we wanted to do, but we had to do it ourselves. So like the financial matter, it was a real pain to really get a good budget, to go into studio, to make it work. So it, it was an immense work and to fit all stuff like agendas. We all have a family, we all have a day job. So we cannot take something like a half year off. So everything had to be planned. Yeah, it was almost impossible to really finish it. I had to travel to Paris at least seven times for more than a week. So it was really taking too much time. But okay, in the end, it was all worth it. The result is the thing is counts. Cool, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Most of the time, Carla writes the lyrics and you the music. Um, how can I um, imagine your um, working process? Um, usually I start with the music. Mm -hmm. um, I'm able to make something like a blueprint where drums, uh, guitar lines and bass is already there. So if I send them the MP3 for, for the rest of the band to hear, they have something like a, a bigger picture. Then they filter out what is for them and make it their own. And when we come to the rehearsal room, uh, we see what everyone has done with uh, my blueprint or the, for something, from someone else. And then we see what we have to fine tune and stuff like that before we do the pre-production and go into studio. And then Tar Carla takes over. She needs uh, a good uh, story for herself to do the lyrics. But the story also comes from the music. If there is a good line for her to catch up, it will work out fine. Who makes the vocal lines? Ha! Huh. I do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I read something about real life sound and uh, fear. Yes. It, are your lyrics very um, um, personally and your music? Or? Well, for Carla, the, the, the lyrics are personal. When she writes them, it's what is keeping her busy, but also from her personal life. Um, difficult times and difficult eras, but also happy times, of course. And then there is also the world. There's a lot of stuff happening, and at the moment there was also a lot of uh, bad things happening in the world. So we, uh, she picks it up and makes something like a picture in the head, make a story, and then the lyrics come from, from there. You said happy times, um, yes. because most of your lyrics are more sad, but your yeah. name is La Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> I think for Carla, the, the mood, the the dreadfulness and stuff like that it makes it easier to come up with the lyrics. If you have to write something positive, it's probably more difficult for her to, to write a good story. So that's why more of the lyrics have something to do with a personal issue or stuff like that. But she's a very happy person in a per, in, in real life, so no, <laughs> no problem with that. But she has a more affinity with uh, something like a negative uh, feeling. And so that's for the, the lyrics a more easy way to go. What do you think? What makes your music special? Well, if I have to say, I don't think we are special. But if someone, the listener, the fan, does like it and thinks it's special, it's okay with us. We don't think, think of ourselves as special people or something like that. We create what we like and hope you guys like it as well. I never get this answer before, but that's yeah. very good, very honestly. Um, you have many gigs in the near future, for example, Female Metal Voices Fest. Um, how important is it for you to be successful and... Yeah. If you want to do these kind of gigs, these are of high standards, you have to work hard, you have to like it, you have to do a lot of things that are really not uh, the nice thing to do within the music. But if you see something happening, it's working, um, people are coming to your product and say, we like it, we're going to do the work. Metal Female Voices Fest is one of the things you have to do. Partners rely on that, but the band also, it's, it's a stepping stone for 2015 for us. If we do not do something like that, it's done for us. You also have uh, playing, uh, <laughs> you're also playing on Luriel's uh, Real Life yeah, Party. Sure. How did this develop and what do you think about the band? Uh, I checked them out. I think it's very cool to incorporate um, something like a cello or a violin with what they do. Uh, I think the, the new single they have released, what's also on their Facebook and stuff like that, very cool. It's a very good band. Um, they asked us, so we were very oh. flattered. So, whoa, what hap what's happening? Um, and it came from there. It was fantastic. The, the booking agency we both have uh, set it up uh, to interchange uh, the communications. And we heard it right off very positively. It's a very good band. Uh, you can have a lot of bands with something like an arrogance and stuff going on. But between us, there's nothing like that. 
it sounds that uh, you are more and more popular uh, till this moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a little step or not? Yes, it's truly a step. Uh. We worked hard to have something going for 2014. It's now happening, so now we have to kick off and make it work for 2015. What are your plans for the future? We probably will release uh, multiple mini CDs for 2015, uh, two or three, that will make the full album. So the first mini CD, I hope we can do something like uh, April next year to have for the summer festivals new material to show on. If someone um, doesn't know you till this moment, what song would you, um, um, <laughs> what do you want him to hear? What's your favorite song from? Well, if, if it's about um, uh, what's now our sound, there are two. One is very metal, it's called Falling Down, and one, don't get me wrong, it's called Song for an Idiot. <laughs> don't take offense, it's just a cool song. It has a really steady bass and stuff like that. It's very cool. Just go on and listen. It's just on uh, uh, in the net, on the net as well. So pick it up and just listen to it. Do you have last words for the fans? For the fans, you guys rock. Because of you, we have a future. We add out your support. Yeah, we don't have anything going for us. If you want to make it, we have to have you beside us. So come on over to our gigs, introduce yourself, make a chat, and we drink a beer. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Take care. <laughs> This is a song for an idiot. This is a